What is up, Villainards, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now today we finish up our talks on the Inquisitive Rogue, the Sherlock Holmes, the Investigator, the one that wants to solve all of the mysteries, and it's a really cool subclass flavor wise it's it's okay as far as uh, mechanically speaking but we are going to see how far we can push it in a build today before we do that make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already also make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded also, if you would like to support the channel a little bit more, you can become a member down below by clicking that join button. For only $2 a month, you can become a bronze snapper. And of course, that gives you access to my full library of build guides, as well as subclass fixes. And of course, you get more perks as you go up the line. So make sure to check that out. But of course, I am super appreciative of all of you who are here regardless. So let's go ahead and jump into this build. So the idea for this build is rather simple, right? The the Inquisitive Rogue is pretty cut and dry in what it wants to do. As far as combat goes, we want to use insightful fighting and we want to just kind of go from there, right? Give ourselves free sneak attack regardless of what our allies are doing, regardless of whether we have advantage or not, and just kind of deal some damage, right? There are ways that we can enhance this though, and, and there are a lot of, of easy ways that we can enhance this through just a little bit of multiclassing. And so that is what we are going to be doing today. Just a little bit of multiclassing and a whole lot of Inquisitive Rogue. So let's jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and post the rules for this series right here, and we will start off as always with our race. Now again, I don't want to do the whole variant human, the whole custom lineage if I don't have to, and I really don't have to. You absolutely can. Uh, there's a feat that I absolutely would take if I was going to be a variant human or custom lineage. Uh, I'm taking that at the first chance that I get to take an ASI or feat, uh, so you'll see exactly what that is, but I don't think that it is so necessary that we have to take it right now. Instead, I would rather take an elf, and more specifically, the pallid elf. Now, I already know what the comments are saying. Dapper, you can't use that. That's from the Wild Mound book. Yes, I can. That is an official book, even though it was by Matt Mercer. All the other Matt Mercer stuff is not official, but this one is, and so it counts. So that is what we are doing. Of course, honorable mentions at the end will list some other stuff. If you would like to use something else, if your DM does not allow something from Wild Mount, Whatever it happens to be, there are alternatives and that's fine. But I really like the Pallid Elf here and it kind of was made for this subclass, to be honest. Um, so of course you get the normal stuff, the 30 foot walk speed, the dark vision, the Fey ancestry, trance, keen senses, all that good stuff. But we also get a few other things here and those are Incisive Sense and Blessing of the Moonweaver. Incisive Sense gives us advantage on investigation and insight checks. Well, that not that huge because that is what we are going to be doing a lot with this subclass. We are using insight in order to combat those enemy deception checks. And so now we are just even better because we get free advantage. That is huge. And we also get Blessing of the Moonweaver, which isn't as big a deal, but it is still nice. We do get some free spells here. We get Light, which is a pretty nice cantrip, can be decent. We also get Sleep, which is fine at early level, it, it falls off pretty quickly. Um, and then we also get invisibility, which we can cast on ourselves, which is also really good. Uh, I think I think that's nice. And at fifth level, regardless of what we do, I'll absolutely take that. I, I, think, that's, uh, I think that's great. We're gonna be doing rogue stuff, and this allows us to get in and out of places that maybe we wouldn't have been able to before. So I think, I think that's a great pickup, and, and I think that this fits this build perfectly. For stats, of course, we're using the modified standard array that we had earlier in the video. And if you use something different at your table, whether it be point by, st normal standard array, uh, whatever it happens to be, rolled stats even, uh, then of course, you know, modify as you need to. Some things may come online a little earlier or later, depending. Uh, but either way, it's, it's fine. Just adapt the highest stats to whatever you get as your highest stat and just go down from there and it's all good. So we're gonna start with our highest stat in our dexterity, big shocker, but we're gonna put our next two stats in wisdom and intelligence. We're doing this because the skills that we are looking to do well in 
almost all fit into one of those two categories. Uh, so we want those to be pretty decent and we're gonna be taking several ASIs in order to bump those up as we go. Uh, we want them to actually be at least decent so that we're not failing a lot of these checks seeing how it's kind of our entire shtick. Then of course constitution and then strength and charisma I don't really care about for this build. Uh, it's really do whatever you want. For equipment, because we're a dex-based build, we of course are going to take some light armor, just the best that you can. Probably just going to be some leather armor. If you can get studded leather, great, more power to you. Uh, but leather armor's fine for now. And then of course work up to studded leather eventually, and if you can find anything better, great. And then as far as our weapon, now we're not starting in Rogue. So we are going to be able to go outside of the normal uh, Rogue-ish limitations, which is nice. So I would actually go with a longbow here, something that has a really long range. That's the big thing. If you could have firearms here, that would be great. Um, now, firearms are, are weird, and of course, if you're going to go the firearm route, you can always go with maybe, you know, gunner feet and variant human. You can you can do that if, if you want to do that, uh, if you need to. I, I know a lot of tables run firearms differently and, and, and all that good stuff, but essentially what we're needing is just a martial ranged weapon that goes really, really far. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the gist. And so whatever you can get away with at your table, by all means, go for that. So let's start taking some levels. Like I said, we are not starting in Rogue, and no, we are not starting in Fighter. I get comments all the time of some previous builds. Well, you, this isn't that build because you started Fighter. We're not starting Fighter, okay? We're not taking any Fighter in this build. Don't worry about it, it's fine. What we are starting in though is Ranger, and Ranger is a really good place to start with this. There are a lot of unique benefits that we get here, and a lot of it has to do with our ability to track. We are an investigator above all, right? Being able to track people or being able to track animals or whatever it happens to be is going to be an important skill. And I think that the Ranger actually does fill in a lot of gaps that the Rogue may have had. Yes, going level one in Rogue is really nice. We get more skill proficiencies. We get a lot, a lot of really good stuff, but our other starting things are not that bad. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really okay with it. And what's nice too, is that thinking about Slippery Mine later, we don't get wisdom saving throws with Ranger either. So we don't have to worry about that doubling up right it's totally fine we're, we're good there we get strength and dex with uh, with this so pretty cool I, I think that this is a good starting point and of course we get favored foe and deft explorer as of tasha's favored foe never really going to use it and then we've got canny of course through deft explorer uh really really great i, I think that that's uh, that's fantastic pickup here basically half expertise um so i would go ahead and take insight or you could take investigation or whatever it is you want it'll be a little bit before we get the insightful fighting so if you want to do uh, perception for now or want to do uh, even stealth you could do that it, there's a lot of different options that you can go for here but you get one now and you'll eventually get four more as you level up next up ranger 2 we are going to go ahead and get a fighting style and of course the archery fighting style is going to be the king here we get a plus two to hit to all of our ranged attacks which is huge we're already going to be making long shots and we only get one attack uh, we're not getting extra attack out of this build uh, we're not going that far into ranger so we want to make sure that our attacks do land and are reliable and this fighting style absolutely does that we also get spell casting here so we're going to get a few first level ranger spells of course hunter's mark is going to be a huge one that we are going to want every time besides that it's it's really whatever you want I, i'm really not picky on on what else we take here because hunter's mark is everything we need so that's that's really the uh, the brunt of our, our spell needs on this build. So yeah, take that and, and go nuts with the rest of it. Level three, we're going to be a ranger. And then I promise, I promise this is it. Just the third level and then, and then we're out. So at this level, we of course get primeval awareness, which gives us an extra spell, which is nice. But we also get our subclass here. And I'm going to go with something that, yeah, is a little cookie cutter, but I think it works really well. And that is going to be, you guessed it, the Gloomstalker. The Gloomstalker, of course, stalks his prey in the night, right? You are going to be finding those that did wrong, finding those criminals in the night, and you are going to be taking them to justice, and that is going to be super cool. So we get a few things here, of course. We get Gloomstalker magic, which gives us Disguise Self, which I think is really good. I, I think that's actually 
pretty cool for for this type of a build and and I, I think it works well I think it works well we can of course get into places that we may not have been able to get into otherwise and that can really help with finding clues and and doing your investigation so I think that's great we also get dread ambusher which again just makes us go even more crazy with uh, with all of our damage that we can do we of course get uh, bonus to our initiative which is great and we also get umbral sight which helps us to see in the dark even further we already had dark vision so of course that gets extended and it's really really nice if you don't know a lot about the gloom stalker of course i made a video about it already and i will throw that up in the i card above for you to check out now with that out of the way we'll go ahead and jump back to rogue and we are going to be there the rest of the way so at rogue one we get expertise of course and this is going to give us two skills in expertise we already got one with canny and so now we get a total of three if you don't have insight at this point take it now if you don't have perception at this point take it now the other one is up to you if you want to do stealth or thieves tools at this point you by all means can so that you are more rogue ish uh, but if if you're wanting to do just the big three of investigation perception and your insight i think that's perfectly reasonable to do at this point and then later on you could do stealth and thieves tools once you get the second round of this at rogue six so Really, it's up to you, but I think that uh, I think that's the way that I would go with it. We also get sneak attack here, of course, getting our numbers started off, and we are going to be running through Rogue the rest of the way, so of course we're going to be dealing a lot of sneak attack by the end of this. And finally, at level 3, of course, while I think they can, we get Thieves Cant, which is the secret language of Rogues, being able to uh, decipher hidden messages, that kind of thing. It's a cool flavor piece. Talk to your DM about how you can make that a little bit more exciting in your game. At Rogue 2, we are going to get Cunning Action, which gives us a bonus action dash, disengage, or hide. Always useful, always amazing. Yes, it conflicts with insightful fighting here in a level, but if you're really far away, then it really doesn't matter, does it? Uh, I, I think that that's fine. This is going to be able to help us close distances if we need to, or get away if we need to and still preserve that action to be able to make these big attacks, which is great. Then at level three, of course, we get our subclass, and of course we get Ear for Deceit, Eye for Detail, and Insightful Fighting, as well as Steady Aim. So these are all awesome, right? But we're really here for the Insightful Fighting. Here's the big thing about Insightful Fighting, and the reason why I want to take something that has a massive range. There is no range on Insightful Fighting. It doesn't mention one. So as long as you can see something, you can make this check, which is pretty cool. Um, it also doesn't say that, you know, it, you don't alert the creature that you made this check. So in theory, if the creature doesn't know that you're there, you can just spam this uh, because if it's not active, you can just do it again the next turn. Uh, so that's a thing. <laughs> there, There's a lot of, of interesting ways that you can kind of make this work really really well um, and then of course with that plus two uh, to the archery fighting style I, I think that that really really helps us to be able to hit really uh, really consistently even though it is at a long distance we may have disadvantage if it's far enough away uh, the longbow has a great range um, even heavy crossbow if you wanted to go that route I prefer longbow personally but you can go that route if you want to um, but yeah I, I think that this is really going to help you get consistent sneak attack because now you don't necessarily have to have advantage and gaining advantage can be difficult sometimes and you don't have to make sure that your fighter or barbarian or whoever is running straight into the fight right you can be off on a cliff by yourself or you can just be doing your thing have your party right behind you and possibly take somebody out from a really long way away and your party doesn't even have to engage nobody has to even get close to danger and that can be really helpful. So I, I think that the combination there is really, really good. And of course, on the first turn, we get an extra attack, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, if we used this first thing and then make that extra attack, that's pretty cool. So if we miss the first attack, we can still try again and get make sure that we do get sneak attack at least on one of those attacks, which is pretty cool. In Rogue 4, we finally get an ASI or feat. It's really late, but it's okay. And this is the feat that I would say to take at the beginning if if you can or if you want to or if you get free feet at your table i get free feet at my table but i do not assume that most people get that because i know that that's not true uh, i would take observing i think that this feat is perfect 
for this build, giving us a huge bump in our passives and it gives us a plus one to our stats. I didn't mention this earlier, but of course we get a plus two and a plus one to two stats of our choice. We bumped our dexterity by two to 19 and we bumped our intelligence one to uh, a 14 total. And then of course this gives us a plus one in wisdom, which we can bump up to get a 16. So we're now at 19, 16 and 14 respectively in those top three stats. We will be fixing that dexterity very shortly but uh, for now that is what we are doing and it's super nice to have that evened out now at 16. And then a Rogue 5, we get Uncanny Dodge, which is a great defensive feature that allows us to cut damage in half once per turn as a reaction, which is really, really great. At Rogue 6, we get our second round of Expertise. So of course, whatever you have not taken that makes you feel more roguey, go ahead and do that now. Uh, my personal recommendations would be Stealth, Thieves Tools, Investigation, Perception, and Insight, but go wild, do whatever you wanna do. Then we get Evasion at Rogue 7, which is great. This just allows us to take either half or no damage from incoming checks that are dexterity based. So your fireballs, any kind of like quick time trap that may occur, um, anything like that, that that forces that kind of a save is going to proc this and you are just going to dance around what could be potentially a lot of damage, which is amazing. Then at Rogue 8, we get our second ASI or feat and no, I'm still not taking Sharpshooter. I, I know the Sharpshooter is insanely good here, but I wanna shore up that dexterity, and I think that there's another feat that really helps us out here as well, and I think it's a great idea to take the Piercer feat. Now, this is a half feat, which is really nice, so this does allow us to bump our dexterity up, which is great, and it allows us to have more explosive crits whenever we hit with our weapon. That is amazing, because we're dealing piercing damage whether we are doing a firearm or a bow, and so this just fits perfectly there. I absolutely love that. Then at Rogue 9, we get Steady Eye, which is fine. It's okay, I guess. Um, I, again, a lot of these middling features are, are okay. They're not the best. If you missed the video on Tuesday, make sure to check that out uh, just because that has better descriptions for all of these features. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, then Rogue 10, we get a bonus feat here, which is pretty cool. At this point, I would either Take Sharpshooter if you want to take Sharpshooter, but for me, I would rather take a plus two to Intelligence. I would rather go ahead and bump that Intelligence up to help out these stats. Even though we're doing really well in them, I think it's good just to have that as a safety blanket. So if you're more focused on damage on this build, go for it. Sharpshooter makes a ton of sense here to make sure we're getting rid of that extended range disadvantage. I totally get it. But I also really like the plus two to Intelligence here as well do whatever makes you feel better there. Then at Rogue 11, we get Reliable Talent, which just makes us even better at a lot of these checks. Uh, so yeah, we, we're just even even better. And we, we're basically at the point where we almost can't fail a lot of these checks. Uh, a lot of these important checks that we are, are looking for are, are gonna be just, just easy breezy, and, and I, I love that. Then at Rogue 12, we get another ASI or feat. Um, again, if you didn't take plus two intelligence last time, I'd take it here. Um, or if you're not maxed out on dexterity, I'd take that. And then, you know, in descending order, I'd like to get a 20 in dexterity and then 16s in the other two. I think that that's a really good place to get to. Um, and then once you get past that, I would take the tough feat if you have room. We get Unerring Eye at Rogue 13, which again is fine. We talked about it a lot on Tuesday. Um, yeah, it's just it's just fine. The, these features are just fine. If it's not insightful fighting or our 17th level feature, then eh, it, it's okay, I guess. Uh, then we get Blind Sense at Rogue 14, which is fine, I guess. For this, it's not going to help as much because we're not going to be in melee, at least hopefully, with any kind of hidden creatures, but it could happen, I guess, and this would allow us to see those. Um, and then Rogue 15, we get Slippery Mind, which gives us those wisdom saving throw proficiencies, which is great. We had strength and dexterity already, but this allows us to pick up wisdom as well, which is pretty nice. Then Rogue 16, I would keep going with my stats. Again, 20 in dexterity, 16s in wisdom and intelligence, and then take tough feet if you need more room there. And then if, if you get all of that stuff and then run out of room, I'd start bumping Constitution. So it's really, really whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever you have room for. Um, and then finally, Rogue 17, Eye for Weakness, gives us a bump to our sneak attack damage. Always going to be a good thing. 
So what do you think of today's build? I think this one's fun. I, I think that this is not a necessarily overpowered build, uh, but I think that there's a lot of really good stuff. I think that this is one of the better rogues outside of combat. Um, I, I think that this gives a lot of great versatility while still being very focused. And that's kind of a difficult balance to strike sometimes, uh, but I think this does that pretty well. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think. Of course, we have our honorable mentions before we dip out, and I've got a very interesting one to, to talk about here. Um, so first of all, we've got the Cleric, and the Cleric makes a lot of sense here, of course, if you are a War Cleric. This gives us a bonus action attack, which is great. We, of course, get extra uh, spells here. There's a lot of great ones, Bless being a, a huge one, um, is then that's kind of the one that I would sit on most of the time if I wanted to go with War Cleric. Um, just bless, that way you're making sure that, uh, that your attacks do land, especially from a, a far distance. Also gives you heavy armor proficiency if you wanted to do that as well, so also an option. Then for Fighter, of course, Battlemaster, duh. I don't think I really need to explain that one all that much. Uh, that's good on pretty much any build, so we're not going to talk about that. Finally, the weird one. I think the, the Genie Warlock is actually a really cool pick here, and I'll tell you why. I think number one, because we would get the spell Hex, and yes, you can get Hex through other means and blah blah blah, but I think the Hex spell actually works great here because it's similar to our Hunter's Mark, but the difference is you can choose a stat for them to have disadvantage in a check on. Well, wouldn't you know it, but Insightful Fighting forces a check, which is pretty cool. So you can give disadvantage to the charisma checks, which is pretty neat. Uh, I, I think that's great. It makes your insightful fighting a lot more reliable, especially at early level. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely a cool, a cool one. And of course you have a stash for all your clues and you can throw those all in your bottle, which I think is, I think that's a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of fun. Does it make sense for stats and, th and things? Nope, absolutely not, uh, but it's a lot of fun. So definitely consider that. Next up, of course, we have other feats we could have taken, and of course, Elven Accuracy is at the top of the list. This is great, of course, but we aren't necessarily going to be getting advantage as consistently here as we have in other builds, so I left that out. We also have the Gunner feat optionally if you are taking a firearm. If you're taking a bow, this isn't nearly as useful. It does have its uses, of course, uh, but it's not as useful so definitely watch out for that um, it is nice of course being able to ignore loading property um, so that can definitely be a big one um, and then same thing of course for bows you want to make sure that you can ignore loading property if you are doing things uh, related to you know extra attack or in this case uh, we get two attacks on a turn because of gloomstalker then of course the last one sharpshooter of course I, I didn't give a specific slot for it to go in uh, but it, of course if it's super well on this build anywhere if you want to do that then finally other races and I think the gif is kind of at the top of the list if you want to go with the firearms this gives gives kind of a half gunner feat as the racial, which is pretty cool, and I think that works really well. The Lightfoot Halfling also works pretty well here, I think. Um, I, I like that one a lot here for the features. It works really well with what it is that we're doing, and of course, um, the Gnome makes a lot of sense as well, giving us a lot of magic. Well, it's not necessarily magic resistance, but it is uh, help in our saving throws that are intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, and Let's be real, most of your spells are going to be that outside of things like Fireball. So I think that uh, I think that that's also going to be super helpful as well. So that's our build. I hope you guys enjoy. Next week, we're talking about the mastermind, the one that has all the plans, the man with the plan here. And uh, is it any good? We will just have to see. Until then, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.